In this lesson, I want to go over the framework, you know, a little more depth and detail so you understand what a framework is and how we're going to use this for this site. All right, so you go to extensions and you go to template manager. And from the template manager, you want to click on where it says the Helix 2 default. So you click on it. And then it brings you to this page. Now, this gives you information um, about this particular framework. Whenever you're, you're building a website with a framework, you're always going to get the information about the particular framework, you know, the creators of that framework uh, back here, which is the overview. And as I mentioned before, frameworks are really great because they allow you to be able to create sites so much faster. Without using a framework, you would have to, you know, hand code a bunch of stuff, and that can take a long time. And you have to do some testings. You have to go through a different processes to make sure that everything, you know, it's is working how it's supposed to. So what the Helix framework does is it's eliminated the need for you to have to create something uh, from the ground up. I mean, hand coding it, you know, line by line. So they've done that part for you. And let's take over a look here at the basics. OK, when you come here to the basics, you have the layout. Now, this gives you the pixel dimensions for this uh, the site. So when you look at this right now, the dimensions for this is listed here. Eleven seventy. If you click on the drop down, you can change this to nine forty. And you can also change the type. Do you want it to be fixed or do you want it to be responsive? Right now, the default is responsive. So once you change it to uh, 940, let's save and you can take a look to see how that looks. So right now, this is the 1170. Let's refresh it and see what the 940 looks like. So, OK, right now we've moved it over to the 940. And as you can see, it's moved, moved inside just a little bit. So now you have everything in the center and not everything out wide. So that way you have an option of the type of layout that you want. You know, some people want the closed in. Other people just like the flat design where everything is just uh, out open. Um, so that's a personal preference that you can choose uh, with this hair. But once again, once it's responsive, everything is going to show up how it's supposed to, regardless of the, uh, the pixels that you're using here. So we can just you know, come back to that later. And then you have here for the logo, the logo, you can choose an image, you can choose a text or you can choose none. And then you can also choose position for the logo, which is here, the logo position. All right. So you have right now it's set to an image. This is by default, the image that's been uploaded there. So if you want to change uh, the logo here, all you have to do is select and then you can upload your own image. Or if you want to put text, so I'm going to put text here. OK, and then you can also choose the dimensions is 130 by 50. So let's see how that looks. OK, so there you see it now is just text, you know, drag and drop. And you can also, you know, uh, you can also change the position for that. But you don't need to do that. Or if you don't want a logo for that, then you can just, you know, put it to none. And then you click save. So now you don't have any logo. Now, there are times when, as you should let on the course, there are times when you may not want to have anything when you're creating a, you know, your landing page. There are times when you may want to have a logo and there are times when you just want just the information. And also, I'm going to show you how you can also remove this home button here so you can replace different things there. All right. So we've done that. Let's go back here and lift that to text. And once again, if you want to change the image, you can set it to image here, which is by default. And then you can choose select and it's going to allow you to choose it from wherever you want it to be. You can do that on your own. And for the footer, let's go down here to the footer. This is the footer. All the stuff you see at the bottom. If you want to change that here, you can change that, you know, copyright. You can change the name. So I'm just going to change this to. Drag and drop, drum of course. And then if, if you want to hide this Helix framework logo, you just click on hide. If you want to hide the Joomla credits, which is said designed by and powered by Joomla, 
you can choose to hide it. So let's save and see what that looks like. So right now you see here, all those things have, you know, been removed. And then you have the brand information here where it says designed by, you know, you can change that. Uh, but I'm, I'm just going to leave that here, you know, um, just leave, you can always change that to whatever you want it to be. Uh, and then HTML CSS, you don't want to show that. And then for the go to the top settings, what it's asking you is you see this button here at the very bottom. When you click on it, it takes you back to the very top. So if you have a long page and people scroll all the way to the bottom, instead of them having to scroll all the way back up top, they can just click this and it's going to automatically take them back to the top. And you can also choose the position here. If you don't want to show that you just click on hide and save and see what that looks like. And let's refresh. So now that that's no longer there. So once again, that's a personal preference. You may want to or may not want to put that there. Um, I don't know. I might come back and put it on, but for now, I'm just going to lift that off. Okay. So next you go to the presets. Now with the presets, you have different, uh, styles here, you know, three different styles and you have control over the color, the header color, the background color, the text color, the link color. So if you want to, um, change something, you can change the background color. You can change the header color. You can change the links color. You can change uh, the text link and the link color here. So there are a lot of flexibility with this. And I'm just going to leave this as the default. Once again, if you want to change, uh, then you certainly, you know, you can you can do that. But one thing, too, is that whatever settings you're using, just keep in mind that you always want your page to look very clean. The goal when you create a landing page, you want something that's that's clean and straight to the point. You don't want to have a page to have a whole bunch of, you know, three different colors going on this hair, that there, that's very distracting. And right now everything is very clean and straight to the point. So as we work on the course later, you're going to see, you know, how everything, you know, ties in together. So let's move over to the layout. Now, I just want to give you a quick overview with this. I'm working another course that's going to go a little bit more extensively to, to you know, help you understand this layout. But this is pretty much using the Twitter bootstrap scaffolding, which uh, is based on, on a grid, you know. So once you take a look at this here, you have the, the header, you have the footer. All these are module positions here. And you can be able to manipulate and move things over and change things. You can move, you can just drag and drop one thing up, bring it down. Uh, we don't need to change any of that right now. But this gives you an overview of how, you know, the layout is set up. So let's say, for example, this is the features section here. This is the module position for the features. So let's say if you wanted to move the feature, which is right here, if you wanted to move that to be below the users, all you have to do is just just drag it and you put it there. And that is automatically going to move that from this position to this position here. So this is really great because there are times when you may want to move something from one corner to the next. Well, this allows you to do just that. You can move things around. You can redesign them how you want them to be you can add more columns and you can you know there's so much flexibility uh but i'm not going to be going into you know extensive detail in this course uh, on upcoming course that i'm working on is going to give you a, a complete breakdown of how you can change you know the css some of the coding and, and things like that and then you go over to the menu this is you know you choose the menu that is uh connected to the front end right now is set to uh, the main menu and then you can choose the type of menu on the drop line, you know, split menu, choose the width and then the fonts. And of course you have your other advanced. You can also enable Google analytics. Once you do that, you can put your tracking code here. Uh, the one that you get from Google. So I'm not going to be needing that. And then menu assignments. Uh, once again, uh, menu assignments, you can you can duplicate a template uh, and assign it to a, a different menu. 
So in other words, you can have six different pages or however many pages you want, and each page can have its own styling. So one one page can have, uh, you can use one template for one page, another template. This allows for a lot of flexibility. And I've done what I've done too is that when I'm working on my sites or when I've worked on client sites, there are times that they want one page to have a different format. And another page should have a different format. So this is where, you know, I come here to be able to do some of that here. Um, but once again, I just give an overview of this. So that's the framework. It's important that you understand the layouts because we're going to be utilizing the layouts when we're creating uh, the different types of pages here. So let's move on to the next lesson.